concept we have introduced is first one, right? We have been right off the bat something that we track assistance energy by measure the experimental measurable uh, function or quantity, heat or work. Uh, in discussing this, we discovered that when you have, let's just say if you have a system uh, under a constant pressure, if you apply the heat uh, as I showed earlier in the, one of the supplement, uh, supplemental video, uh, the heat that you put in end up always cause some expansion. That's the uh, very common situation when you deal with, especially biological system, where you have a constant pressure. So in this case, uh, we have realized that the heat that you put in don't always end up get used to uh, increase the internal energy. So as a result, we find out every time it gets pushed, the heat putting cost this is so want to push a little bit. So if it's a constant pressure, the change of the volume is the, basically the work you're doing. So since you're doing work to the outside, so it basically it's a negative term here, right? So the work that you will have to do when you're on constant pressure, when you inject the heat, you end up always causing some expansion. So as a result of that, you realize that, oh, actually in this case, your internal energy change is the heat you put in, then you end up with loss due to the work you have to do. So, um, and then if you kind of move things around a little bit, you realize, hey, well, probably uh, if we just keep tracking Samson Now we get this heat a little specification says on the constant pressure. So that led us to these intriguing new state functions. Constant pressure, you can put P just right up, take the delta out. So what this really means, we're in a very fixed point barometer. The heat you put in is the change of internal energy. So here, you have a fixed volume, the QV is always change of internal energy. So, but if you have a fixed pressure, the QP, we decide to call these, uh, or a new frequency, H, H is enthalpy. Right, so that's, I mean, you can consider this kind of like a shortcut, you know, what we're doing. So we just, uh, what this really means, under constant pressure, no matter what, it was a liquid, it was an experiment, or it's a piece of metal, if you put a heat in, think in your head, what changed in the state function? Uh, basically, entropy changed. That's it. So just keep that. So uh, this will help us a lot in the later on. Week. So this is the first law, um, how we started from the basic definition, the basic same dynamic uh, parameter to a kind of a special situation, which is constant pressure. And then uh, under those conditions, if we introduce a new uh, state function, enthalpy, it all makes sense convenient for us. That is, every time the heat comes into the system, you change the system's uh, property. That property is more than just original internal energy, we call them enthalpy. It's an internal energy plus the volume. And this is just virtually easier for us to keep track. Uh, when we, the heat is something you can measure relatively directly. I, we mentioned about isothermal titration colorimetry, uh, differential scanning uh, colorimetry. All of those experiments are done dealing with heat moving out of the sun constant pressure. So we are virtually changing the system's enthalpy rather than internal energy. So this is, uh, was reviewed a little bit. You go around and think about when you think about entropy change of the sense, it's equivalent the heat comes in on the constant pressure. Okay. So um, and, and the other thing is, you know, keep in mind the heat and work are the one that experimentally measurable, right? 
can measure the work by measure how much since he moved over a certain distance, um, or heat comes in by measure the temperature. If you know the heat capacity, you can you can virtually uh, measure this two and then you can keep track of the assumption change of the system. Now, in the second law, we have um, similarly. Uh, introduced a certain kind, a certain special term uh, or function. But very first, we have, um, through a series of um, example, and also quantitative uh, example of the ideal gas expansion, as well as the heating, we have shown that something in the system is changing when you uh, put certain amount of heat to the system under constant temperature if the process is done in the reversible process. And that sense change is called entropy. So this definition is relatively new because uh, we could not relate to internal energy. Was in the entropy case, we're just starting with Q and W. This is something like we focus on the energy matter to disperse. The degree of the energy matter disperse can be measured by these new state functions. So that's how entropy come into play. And we, we didn't just call this, we actually showed this mathematically. That's the case. So I want you to go back to see the previous uh, supplemental uh, video showing how we derived this conclusion. Right? And also, we, um, with this in mind, we have similarly in this case, we have a system. Uh, more like than this. Then, like a, you can call it the universe, you have a system, and the second law of state has dealt as isolated system, always the body dynamo for spontaneous. So I'll just show it with the sign, okay, S P O N. So, so that, when applied to a system with the surrounding, uh, we also explain the second law really is expressed as, expressed as a universe, the system and the surrounding larger than zero for spontaneous process. So that's basically the second law. Again, we deal with a situation where, wait a minute, uh, most of the biological system we are dealing with is to undergo constant temperature pressure. So this gives us another chance to create a shortcut. In this case, the shortcut is that we just like to find something only associated with the system, right? In the laboratory, it's much easier to focus on the beaker where you're working on, or uh, a container where you, your system is at, or a, a, a cell in a biological system. So system is usually better defined, whereas the surrounding is vastly undefined. So, so it's much harder sometimes to deal with the system, uh, surrounding. So, so in this case, we, because of uh, the special restriction we were dealing with with biological situation, so we can kind of create a, a shortcut by saying, well, basically, if you think about the heat going from surrounding to the system, you cause, if it's under the constant pressure, we're already going to use a shortcut, right? So constant pressure, you cause the change of the entropy change of the system. So good. So we knew if the heat on the kind of pressure of going from so I know the system's entropy will increase by that amount, right? So, but then definition of the entropy change of, entropy change of the environment uh, is the Q you put in the system. Well, in this case, it was lost from the surrounding, so it's pretty easy. So the surrounding normally can be first Q, whatever surrounding of this, uh, uh, so DYP, that's actually what the original definition. Now you can quickly relate this to the next, the inverse change of uh, the system, because that's the gain of the system is the loss of the surrounding. So because of that, uh, now we can, since everything, so we can like to write delta S is the system, and then uh, now we can actually just uh, direct write down delta H. Right, because I put the negative. So this 
now you realize that we have accomplished what we want to do initially. That is, we just uh, now we can only need to track what the change over the system to be able to calculate the total uh, entropy change of the universe. So um, the rest of it is purely for mathematical or conventional reasons. There's no any other trick. First of all, we just say since we ever deal with the system, we just get rid of all the systems that become delta S minus delta H over T. And we could just put the T on the together or delta T delta S minus delta H. So this time has to be larger than zero for any uh, spontaneous process. And then we can also say, well, like every Later, you'll become clear. We decide to actually call the other way around. So if this has to be larger than zero, so if you times negative on each side, then you'll be delta H minus T delta S has to be smaller than zero. So that's, because this T is uh, always positive above the Kelvin. So then on, on the constant temperature, this T, just like we did over here, the delta can be taken out. There you go. So this is the new function. We define that g equals to h minus t s. Okay. So this is how we kind of walk from here, get a convenient shortcut enthalpy. We got to here. We spend a little bit of time to use the example of heating and the gas expansion, after some uh, discussion, we have seen that there's something called entropy that defined by this experimentally measurable quantity cross, always correspond to either energy and or matter dispersed. So that entropy become quite useful to predict spontaneity of a reaction in a system under this generic second law. However, with the uh, Situations like when you have constant temperature pressure, especially when we deal with biological system, we recognize that there is an easy way to use second law. That is, you can actually relate entropy change of the surrounding to parameters of the system. And this is done so by utilizing the fact that we always run biological or any other chemical reaction on constant temperature pressure the change of entropy of the system uh, can be reflected. It's like a mirror of, of by the system. So, so much so that we realize if we define a new state function g equals h minus ts, and if we just keep track of its changing sign, we can predict whether something's going to happen or not. So this is where the Gibbs energy coming from. Austin? And you can pull out the delta in the second to last line because temperature is constant, right? Thank you, Austin. I was going to show, show that. But, uh, yeah, so this was the, um, so at the end of last class, I have received quite a few questions as to, well, wait a minute, if I have a system at a temperature T1, P1, and it, it going through a lot of process, it gets to T2, P2. Obviously, each of the two states have their own uh, Gibbs energy, you know, H1 and G2. Uh, regardless, then those are always going to be the delta G over G2 minus G1. That always exists a state function, it doesn't really matter. But the problem, though, is you can't use the sign of this to predict if this is going to go here to here spontaneously. Mainly because all these uh, derivations that we can equivalent to the second law to this statement is we have a constraint that the starting ending point must have the same temperature pressure. Okay, so that's a very important concept uh, to keep in mind. So this basically uh, sort of a very uh, quick review of all the time we spent on talking about in the class for for this last few weeks. But this virtually will finish the discussion 
uh, introductory discussion of the concept of thermodynamics in both in terms of the two laws of thermodynamics we use very often, and also in terms of the uh, three, I think the three most frequently used uh, thermodynamic function. One is entropy, where it's coming from. One is entropy, where it's coming from, what does it really mean? Finally, it's energy. How it's actually come about? Uh, uh, why do we even use it? Okay. So before I go further, I, I'm going to pause a little bit, ask the class for questions. This is very important because all the two weeks, we're not just doing this. And I, I want everybody to feel like comfortable. Yeah, I got it. Let's move on. Aaron? Good question. So the pressure being constant ensures that we are measuring basically the energy of this first, not the mass. Is that not? Uh, the pressure ensures that there's no volume that we're not accounting for with the energy coming. So it's just heat change. You're ahead of me already, so I, I think it's a good question, but I'm going to uh, defer answer that question in the remaining of today's class. That, because that's a topic we'll discuss. One more question. Sure. Okay. Temperature yeah. being constant ensures it's reversible, or is that not right? Uh, we derived this idea by assuming it's reversible, but uh, when you apply this, you really don't care whether, uh, whether the two, because you really don't know how, you just ask if this system becomes this other system, whether that process is going to be spontaneous or not. Uh -huh. So you virtually going to say, if this object's at high altitude and at, uh, the lower, then they're going to fall down. But whether it's going to fall down or not, someone's going to put a little block there and this and that. So it, it says it has the tendency to go, but whether it's going to go, how fast it's going to go, is an entirely uh, different matter of not dealing by this law. All this law is telling you is uh, this system has a high free energy than that, so, uh, than that system, so it's negative. But, uh, you, but because the temperature difference, it does not mean it's going to go there spontaneously, because this law will not apply to it. Now, you're trying to put some kind of microscopic or mechanistic insight to it. Uh, we'll discuss that in some of the slides today. Right now, we're trying to just use a uh, quantitative uh, argument to explain to you that these functions cors corresponding to the spontaneity under such condition. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not trying to give you why uh, This is the case because of some qualitative statement. But we'll discuss that. It's a very interesting. So sometimes you do the math, then when you finish the math, the math is very clear and convincing, but you still want to apply some uh, mechanistic uh, picture behind it. So we'll, we'll deal with that as well. The two points you, you mentioned are actually important for us to discuss. Uh, Diego? So is there a purpose for calculating free energy if the temperature changes? There is, yeah, because you still want to know, sometimes uh, you just want to know how much uh, thin you can get out of it. So we'll explain to you again on that one. So, so predict spontaneity is one application of it. Now this basically gets to the next point I want to finish uh, or talk about introducing the free energy. Because obviously G comes about because we want to have a short uh, to use second law, right? And so that's all we end up doing. We call it G, so it can be anything. We call Gibbs of free, but why we call Gibbs free energy? Why don't we call it Gibbs free entropy? Or Gibbs or whatever, right? The reason we call them Gibbs free energy is because I have people didn't answer. Micah, is that you? Yeah. So can you chime in on your on that one? Like we call this Gibbs free energy, not call them Gibbs free entropy. Is because anything you want, you can think of. We talked about this last uh, class. Mm -hmm. 
we call something energy is because of it does what? You said it, right? Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it can be used to do work. Mm-hmm. Good? See? You can't answer the question, so you should raise your hand. Uh, I'll do this a little bit. I have a few people who didn't really come in class. I want to get you going. It's, uh, it, it actually, it, it's something that... Uh, so, so today's class, really, uh, the remaining time I want to go is that uh, we call it Gibbs free energy clearly because uh, it, it may have something to do with energy. And if it has something to do with energy, then we have talked about energy. When we call something energy, it's just because it probably can be used to do work. Right? So let's see what, how do we think about the change of the system uh, can be used to do work. Obviously, you go, OK, you know, let's just think about something. If I have an object, at a very high altitude, you have like potential energy, and it, it drop into uh, a changing of the height, and then you know that the difference of the potential energy uh, can be used to do work. You know, it can push things further, or if it's the water, you can use the hydraulic power to drive the turbine, or it can generate electricity, right? So that's pretty natural. So basically, change of potential energy can be used to do work. What about the change of the Gibbs energy? So, uh, you know, because we actually take a bunch of shortcuts and we're really lost what it really means. So this is something, I hope this is related to what Aaron is trying to get at or you're going to try to get at. I was like, you know, we keep doing this shortcut. We know at the very beginning, on the first law, this is where we can relate work and uh, heat very quick, uh, directly. But we keep using shortcut, 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 shortcut. It gets to this point where G equals this weird thing. Now, if I change it, let's say if I ever, so, so here I know, for this example, you have a potential energy, drop a little bit, it gets faster, and you can push things around. But here, what do we change? Well. D with means tiny change. I can always use delta, but it's just, uh, don't worry about it. This is virtually the same, but I use D it just means a very small amount of change. And then you can use, then there's a DH minus DTS. That's, that's just a little bit of simple math, simple. This is not even math yet. Eric? So even when the T doesn't change, we put the D in front of both. Well, right now, I'm not talking about that yet, but the, I'm getting to that point. So, so yeah, no, so good, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure. So it's constant temperature, T is out, right? So we just say, okay. We still haven't got any simple work. We still could not answer the question that Micah suggests that because he can't do work. So this next question may be a little bit tricky, so I, but I, I want to ask the class to tell me what to do next, um, to think about what the work is. So now, uh, anybody want to tell me how to go relate the Gibbs energy change to the kind of work we can get out of this? I'm going to ask people who haven't talked yet, so Jessica? Maybe you talked about before, but I don't know. So anyway, your name is on my sheets. That means you haven't raised your hand very frequently. <laughs> do you want to, so do you want to tell me what to do? Like, how do I try to relate the change of Gibbs energy to work? What, what, what strategy can you want to your mind? Because I remember what I'm trying to do right now is a question that we just set up. We were working so hard to make a shortcut, and we have gone a long way to create this new function called G. The G is useful because it's used because you can predict the, the directionality. But if it's all for predicting directionality, we don't we shouldn't call them free energy. We can call them free whatever, free energy, free Gibbs, 
whatever that may be, which is how it was. So that means we need to know how its validity works. Right? So what what is the function with direct validity work? We have uh, discussed so far from week one up to this. When we actually talk about work of a system, what was the direct thermodynamic function that directly related work to what law of thermodynamics? So in the first law, what is the thing we, we deal with? In, in terms of internal energy? Okay, so uh, so in this equation, I, I don't see internal energy. That is because what happened? We did a shortcut. So what is the energy hi uh, internal energy hiding in this term? Well, where, where in this shortcut, where is the internal energy being uh, hiding from us? You're, you're very, very close. Actually, you are good at it. You, 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 you're thinking very logically, very clearly. You got the point very well. You got the first law. You, you're, you almost point to there. Because I just need you to find the first law of the internal energy in this equation. Mm -hmm. H. There you go. See? Not that hard. And you actually can think very clearly. This is based, it's the logic behind it. It's like, oh, okay, this is the thing that I'm trying to track. Because I'm trying to get back to work. So what I'm trying to tell you is we do shortcuts. But I'm trying to understand its meaning, including whether it's a meaning, whether it's Diego asking me whether it's doing work, what's the point doing this, or temperate pressure, is I'm going all the way back to extract meaning of dump the Gibbs energy in terms of something we in terms of something we are comfortable with we are familiar with, which is work and heat. So we need to go back. So I I went we spent three weeks trying to go forward and now I'm going to take one huge step back so that we know we don't lose what it really means. Otherwise we just end up doing a bunch of a game of symbols, right? So here you go, like, okay, good. Jessica, you did pretty well. This one. So basically you are P B. Right? Now we're, we're getting closer. So it's like, okay, good. Um, But again, we have been dealing with systems at constant pressure, uh, and a biological system, or any other system. So we can then do another uh, right. We're getting close. So ah, uh, so now, how did we get to work? Uh, Diego? So we're, we're also at constant pressure? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. I like this class because you guys remind me that I forgot right on. And this also means you are you have a very strong uh, uh, presence of mind on the restriction of any thermodynamics law uh, and its application has been put on some kind of condition. It's very important. A lot of mistake is making uh, made in previous years when we teach this class, whether it's in the exam, this exam, or exam at a PhD qualified exam. I mean, we, I make a mistake too. So it's, uh, it's a very, uh, it's, it's a pretty complicated uh, uh, system. Sometimes you, if you're not aware of the restriction of the system, you will potentially make a mistake when you apply this law to analyze uh, research topics. Or experimental work. So, so here. Sorry, just to follow up with that. So that we're assuming constant temperature and constant pressure. Pressure, yes. Okay. All of it together that way. That's right. Aaron? This could be a really bad question. I apologize. No? There's no bad question so, here. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, the enthalpy can do the work, can do work. Like, enthalpy is related to work and energy. Is entropy not related to internal energy? Entropy, uh, you. Don't see how entropy could. You know, actually, I don't know how to answer that question because it's definitely not directly related. And 
it, it's a good question. It's a question that makes me thinking. When Aaron asks that question, I'm thinking about the initial example. Uh, based on that example, I would, I kind of inclined to answer the question as yes. That is, entropy change could be done on the condition where there's no internal energy change. I can only answer the question that way. So because remember when we talk about ideal gas being enclosed in a little chamber, I yank open the chamber to a vacuum, the, uh, the system is going to go wildly running in a larger volume. The internal energy does not change, uh, or entropy change. So, that, so in that sense, the answer is, at least in the case, in, in some cases, they have nothing to do with it. But there are, could also be cases where maybe the change of internal energy is associated with change of entropy, but that I have to be careful think about whether there's other examples, but at least I can pro provide one example to see yeah. they, they can be yeah. associated. Any other questions? Okay, so this is important because the rest of the semester we are just keep using this in a variety of different conditions. So it's very good to, put, to have a very good, uh, a vigorous understanding of these thermodynamic constants, the laws of thermodynamics, uh, the, the application, and the also the potential restriction uh, when you're using it. Okay. Now, um, so, okay, I'm getting here, how do we go from here to work in here, it will be relatively straightforward, right? Because then here you get to the change of internal energy is the work by the heat constant system. That's something we can always do. So basically, you can, uh, this is the heat and this work. Now the reason I put that tiny little d usually means the system. Right now we just want to know when you take a slope, a tiny change of the system gives uh, function g. Uh, if you do it in such a tiny step, you can virtually think uh, the system is a irreversible process. So that means uh, if you recall, uh, in this case, if it's a reversible, and these two terms actually are equal. So um, go back to the definition over here. So basically, the ds over t, right? So that's the changing of the entropy of the system. So this gets What this whole uh, derivation uh, says about the change of Gibbs energy is basically the change of Gibbs energy at constant T P is the maximum amount non-expansion So what does this really mean is if you have a system on the constant temperature pressure, uh, it, it, it went from a point A to point B, there's a Gibbs energy change. Let's say it, it dropped. So what does the uh, Gibbs energy end up going? Well, that the change of Gibbs energy of the going is you can get some work, but not all of them. Because when you're under constant pressure, uh, you the system always end up changing the volume. The changing of the volume is also part of the work. That work cannot be used to do on the system itself has 